Welcome back guys. I know it wasn't long ago since you last saw me, but I feel like I'm getting into a good routine of churning these videos out. Videos out. Churning sounds bad. It's not like a factory where I'm just uh, processing video after video after video, but it isn't like that. I literally have a really good process where I find the right time of day where I can relax um, and make this content for you. So today is Saturday and I'm having a nice day. I'm very relaxed. I thought it'd be time to present to you Felida. Now, I've said in previous videos, I, I struggle with the name because um, it makes no sense, but I did some research. This watch, the brand Felida, is actually a Greek variation of the feminine name or lady's name, Phyllis. Now, I can't criticize Felida anymore because my late grandmother, her name was Phyllis. So, in honor of my grandmother, I have an homage Rolex watch which is also called Kermit. How very strange. So everybody say hello to Phyllis, our Greek friend here. Not entirely, it's ridiculous. But as I said, Greek variation of the name Phyllis is Felida. So Felida, someone in China has probably got an auntie or someone and they say, ah, oh, they're called Phyllis. Uh, let's name our brand. Uh, we can't call it Phyllis. Let's, let's find another variation of it. Felida, there you go, done. There's our branding, sorted. So that's out of the way. That's why I went for the sterile dial because I just can't get on with the name. Even though my beloved grandmother was called Phyllis, I can't have a watch called Phyllis. Same reason why people don't buy watches called Calvin Klein. <laughs> that's why I changed mine. But this, is a fun watch for many reasons. Now, I start my video when it comes to showing the watch by talking about the spec. So I'm gonna get my good friend, I oh, will start with uh, the weights now. I get my good friend, Gipas. He's gonna help us. I'm gonna show you the weight. Now this is an approximation because I've taken about three links out. So it's only gonna be another, say 15 grams, 12 grams to be precise, approximately four grams per link on most watches from my experience. So this, 153 grams, which if a lot of you didn't realize is the sweet spot when it comes to a sports watch. Not too heavy, not too light. You know it's on your wrist, but it's well proportioned, well balanced in weight and comfort. So that's got that out of the way. Let's discuss the other dimensions. Let's get this uh, device out. I haven't given this one a name because it's, let's call it Minch. Um, case size, it should be 40. 40.1, get an extra 0.1 of a mil just for good fun. And the thickness, or height, as some people call it, it's 14.4, so it's about in proportion for the size. And then we've got the lug to lug, excluding the solid end links and the midsection of those links, 47.3. But if you include this part, which is the center links, 53.3. What does that all mean? Well, I'll put it on my wrist to give you an idea of what that actually means, because I have a seven inch wrist and the lug to lug, which is the length of the watch, indicates how well it fits to your wrist. And then the curving of these parts of these solid end links here will indicate how well it fits and conforms to your wrist. And this conforms very comfortably, I must say. So the lug width is 20 mil, so you could easily change this out for straps. Um, I would like to then move on to now the other specifications of this watch because it's got a lot going for it. You've, I've covered the weight, the dimensions. Now let's move on to the materials. Everything is that's metal is 316L stainless steel. And that is a good grade of steel. It's what you get on nearly everything nowadays as when it comes to the watch market. Apart from Rolex, they've got their own special grade of um, steel, which is a lot softer, which uh, is better for refinishing, but that's a whole other story. This is great. You've got a mixture of polishing and brushing. Brushed a lot on the bracelet, top and bottom, and all underneath. I like the fact there's not too much polishing on here. That's why I like it, because too much polishing ends up just being a smudge and scratch magnet. So the bezel insert is actually ceramic and all of the letters, not lettering, the numbers and the lines, etc. that is all loomed. And I'll show you that in a bit. And that is really good. But obviously they buy that from a different supplier because the loom on the dial is not the same. It's not as good. It's actually a little bit duller and not as longer lasting as what's in the bezel. 
which is a bit weird and it's not the same color but that's kind of what you expect so the glass itself is sapphire which for most watches nowadays is synthetic sapphire which 99.9% .9 is made in a factory they effectively grow it and then they slice it and cut off pieces that's how sapphire is made as is how they make the um, cyclops that has perfect you listening to this guys perfect alignment how often i'll quickly show you this i'm not this isn't a double review but just look at the alignment on this blooming kedishan look at that it's like quasimodo's drunk it is that look how out of slopey wonkiness that is that is horrific anyway that's to give you an idea of how good this is and this only cost about 12 pounds more than that kedishan so that's good. That's a sign of someone's made an effort to actually line something up properly, as is all the other alignments. I'm just going to show you here. Look at the arrow at the 12 o'clock, how it lines up absolutely perfectly with the, the arrow, the, the triangle, the 12 o'clock with the 12 o'clock there. Absolutely perfect. Now, uh, I've covered all the materials, the loom. I will show you the loom. Don't worry, that's coming. Um, but what I'm going to discuss now is a few of the tactile aspects and the tactile things is when I first got this watch, this has a 120 click bezel, unidirectional. That means it turns just clockwise, no, anti-clockwise. What am I talking about? Clockwise is that way, anti-clockwise. And it did have a weird snaggy feeling here and here. I gave it a, I turned it in a hot bath. And I ran it under the tap with some soapy water. And that fixed it. I think it just had a tiny bit of grit under there. And since taking that out, it's been absolutely fine. It, it's light. You can feel every individual click. There's no binding like there was before. Like I said, there was that weird gritty point about there. But no, it's fine. Everything lines up. Very light. Really good to use. And what is lovely is this lovely, although unsigned, but I've gone for a sterile watch. 6.8 mil crown that's a good size if you saw my rotary uh, super 7 review you'll know that that had a crown that's nearly a millimeter smaller than this one and that's a bigger watch it's a 42 and it's about the same thickness as this but it's it's all about proportion this is a well proportioned crown so easy to unwind it pops out really easily it's got hand winding but it doesn't have hacking this is one of the more slightly lower, more entry level Myota movements. You can get this with a Chinese movement, but I opted for, because I'm fancy, I went for the um, Myota movement because I thought, I'm going to keep this. I've just fallen in love with this colorway. If you see these little bits of, sort of residue here, that is actually remnants of where I was putting oil and cleaning and stuff under there. So don't worry about that. Um, we know when I got that grit out from under the bezel. Just sort of give you a heads up on that. But no, Myota movement, again, they're, they're robust, reliable, accurate. They're Japanese made, part of the citizen group, Myota, and they, they know how to make their movements, as, as, as you'd imagine. Such a big, well-established brand. So, one other thing I forgot to say when I'm talking about the Sapphire, it doesn't, Sapphire, it doesn't have AR coating, which you don't get really at this price point, but I found the legibility and the clarity of this is to be perfectly fine. So, I think I've been fairly thorough at discussing the movement, all the materials, everything you need to know about this watch, the dimensions, etc. So what I'm going to do now is take a breather, press pause, for reflect, and then I'm going to discuss with you my likes and dislikes. And then uh, we move on to my final conclusion. Now I've saved this loom shot till this point of my likes, because one of the highlights of this watch, I'm going to use my UV torch, the highlights is the loom, because I will show it to you now. Aside from hunting scorpions, I use this torch for hunting loom. So I'm going to give this a quick 15 seconds, which apparently is all one needs to use with a UV torch, 15 seconds to fully charge anything with luminescent paint on it. So there's a nerdy fact for the day. Turn that off. Now, on camera, it always looks a little bit better than reality, but truth be told, I'll pick this up. The bezel, as you can see, is really crisp really bright and obviously brighter and better applied look at the loom on the indices in the hands that has a slightly murkiness uh, murkiness murky look to it because it's obviously not caked in loom like 
they've obviously put more layers of this paint or better grade of paint of loom in the bezel but come on this watch is just over 70 pounds guys that is amazing i'm happy with that so the reason why i didn't talk about the bracelet earlier is because i'm saving that for as as i did with the loom for my like section because this bracelet is fan blooming tastic for the money because it's going to zoom out a bit this brushing is exceptional all the edges are honed this is so well machined there's no snotty machine marks or scratchy areas on it it is so easy to undo it's, it's all very well made it doesn't feel rattly it doesn't feel loose this part on nearly all the pagani designs feels like it's about to break and i had one actually break at this point this feels really robust it has look at this glide lock at this price point i know you can get it on some of the other chinese brands but it's, that pops really reassuring glide lock effectively it's obviously paying homage or copying <coughs> um rolex because they do this you slide it you've got that fine tweaking to get it to fit you absolutely perfectly and that is extremely good so that's why i'm so happy and has screw links and i've removed some links from this bracelet as you know to get it sized for me and there was no cross threading feeling no snottiness no snagging the screws are really neatly done it was so easy to readjust this bracelet so very very well done and solid end links they fit absolutely perfectly no high spots no low spots check that out perfect zero play look I'm, there's no play there zero play oh no there's some there <gasps> you could probably fit a rizzler paper in there look that's about the only play in this whole bracelet that that's what i'm talking about that's why i'm so impressed i've seen enough bracelets that are flimsy and rattly on the other brands to say wow look at this it's fantastic so the likes have been dominated by this fantastic bracelet the bezel loom especially the cyclops is spot on the upgraded movement to the myota is better than some chinese movement i don't know but i do know these myotas they're fine the fit and finish for this price point is exceptional. The negatives, the bezels, for me, I like them a bit sort of more weighty. And the fact it did come with a snotty or snaggy feeling bezel, which was a bit concerning, but luckily for me, I fixed it. It wasn't a actual mechanical failure. It was more like there was just grit in there. But that was it. Um, sterile is probably too extreme. I'd have liked maybe a brand that wasn't called Felida. I'd like it to maybe have had a nice, attractive, symbol or logo i could have chosen to have on there i just don't like the word felida in some old-fashioned text it doesn't work for me because then everything else is so sterile it looks literally like um um i don't know too dull it needs something it needs some detail some text somewhere on it just to break it up a bit especially on this lovely big clasp here it would have been nice to have something on there other than obviously the name phyllis so you're getting my point here I'm smitten with this watch for good reason. I love the design. Um, the, the downsides for me for this price point are very minimal. And I, I've i been very, very fair and very honest with this, genuinely, because I'm, I am measuring this against all the other homage watches I've seen. And I know what to look at and what they can often fudge up. And that is Cyclops, alignment, bracelets. But I've shown you. Alignment on this is perfect. The Cyclops is perfect. Actually magnifies. The bracelet is fantastic for the money. And it's really comfortable. I can get this to fit me absolutely perfectly. It's got a Myota movement. It's, it's great. I'm smitten. So let's... Uh, before I get carried away, just sounding like this is a sales pitch. Which obviously it sounds like. Because <laughs> I am so impressed with this blooming watch. Um, yeah. Let's move on to my conclusion before I get too silly. So conclusion time, guys. I love Phyllis. She was a lovely woman. She always used to make these lovely jam tarts that were that big. Um, we used to have pie and mash, homemade curries. Oh, sorry, I'm talking about the wrong Phyllis here. Um, 
Phyllis that uh, we're talking about in this video is the SU-11 by Felida um, slash Phyllis. They've done a great job. Not as good as my grandmother was. She was a fantastic woman. But this watch is fun and interesting and it's just over £70. What more could you ask for? And really, the fit and finish and the overall feel and sort of the uh, tactile aspects of the watch are fantastic for the money. I really must say, I've had this watch for a while. I've worn it at work. I've worn it, fiddled with it, played with it. I know it had its issue with the bezel, which I fixed. And I know every watch is different. But that was the only thing I was really feeling initially that was letting it down. And I fixed it and I was like, you know what? I know the loom isn't great on the dial and the hands, but it makes up for it by having that crazy loom on the bezel. So overall, it's fantastic. Um, I mean, we've got to remember this is 70 quid, guys. Just over 70 pounds. About $90, $91, whatever. Um, it's, it's on par with the others. And you can't go wrong. If you fancy something different and a watch called Phyllis, go for it. Thanks for watching, guys. As usual, thanks for your support. It's been a joy. I love sharing this content with you. It gives me a buzz during these crazy times. And um, I really value everything that you say in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.